Okay, thanks for joining us today. I have a, uh, a nice still life set up here, and we have a beautiful light coming through the window. Um, we're painting at about 11 o'clock, so this sunlight is directly overhead, approximately directly overhead, and it's a north northern light, so uh, it's on the cool side. I, I, I want to mention that because that's something to take into consideration when you're looking at uh, the still life uh, when you're painting it. It's very important to have an idea of uh, temperatures of our picture. Uh, for instance, our pears are obviously warm and yellow. And um, I'll show you a little something uh, when we start painting uh, to get those colors a little bit more accurate. So we're going to get started. Oh, I'm sorry. Before we get started, I, um, I videotaped a, a quick little pear still life a few weeks ago using one of these kind of piers uh, just so that you can get an idea of how to set up the pier itself you know the, the shapes of it um, what are the different values of it laid on the picture so if you want to take a look at that either after you see this or before you see this it, it definitely will help you all right so real quick going over our colors we're using titanium white uh, cadmium lemon yellow, cadmium orange, cadmium red light, um, quinacridone magenta, dioxazine purple, ultramarine blue. This is um, phthalo turquoise, phthalo green, uh, yellow ochre. It's a little, uh, a little pile of black there. And then I just put out five values um, grays because I do have a lot of gray in the background and that will help me to just hit it quicker that's all very valuable to get those uh, gray values sometimes I'll put out nine depending on the painting on this one I just put out five and then this color in the corner here is called nickel titanium yellow if you look at that against that yellow you can see that's a little bit cooler um, it's probably the coolest color pigment that they make um, it's a if you look at that yellow you can see some warmth in it and that's just cooler I put it on the side over here so I didn't get it mixed in here too much that's gonna help me with some of these pairs um, or at least I'm gonna experiment putting them in there so let's get started first thing I want to do is get a quick sketch and I want to get a, a block in what's going on here this is going to be a little tricky this is a vertical canvas that we're going to paint this composition but there's a lot of width to this so my um, my outside i'm just i just took some purple to make this wash and uh for my drawing so i want to get i think this is probably going to be as wide you know i'm going to go that wide there that's going to be the outside here, and I want to just kind of get that angle in of what I... about how high I'm coming with this. And then I'm just going to about where my handle is around over here. And then I'm going to bring my angle down on this side. I'm not locked into this. And, and I've got that bottom kind of aligned for you as a viewer to see. It's a little bit of an angle for me. But I am going to paint that in kind of straight. And it's probably going to sit about here. that when I mix the grays down below here where you can't see. So I'm just going to add that into the purple. Um, so that table top is going to come across there. Somewhere is at the corner where my jug is. Um, kind of sit up about here. Goes on an angle. Both comes down. Let's back that up a little bit. Let's so see the bottom there. Good. Now I'll go in uh, shape 
keeping my jug. Just, uh, I'm going to have to scooch over this way a little bit more. reason I'm over to the right of the camera is because I see this pair is going to be somewhere else in here. And this one's over this way. So I do know that I have to keep in mind, I don't want that guy running off the table. So we got to keep that in mind when I sketch that in. But my jug kind of, I'm just going to do this just so you can see we are dealing with an optical shape, cylinder shape. Right, so it's coming down here, and then it goes about there, and then it kind of comes down. And then it does about the same thing on this side. Kind of comes in. And that's okay, I don't want to paint, I don't want to draw it in perfectly. I don't want to get that all in later when I uh, work my background. Right now I just want to get some basic shapes. Good enough. Now I start painting, I start laying in my pear shapes and I'm just going to sketch this out over here to show you. Every one of those pears have an axis. Right, I'm looking at the one before I left. It has an axis. And then on that axis, it has the two shapes. For a pair, we're looking at the shape at the bottom. It's usually bigger. And then a shape at the top. And that's really all you need to do to get started with that. Later on, you can nitpick it. And, um, you know, whatever the angles are doing on that pier. But that's really what I'm looking at, that guy. All right, it comes, it's not a perfect shape. And that's how we'll do that later. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is lay in my background gray. And um, since I'm working with my focal point before I lay that in, let me finish those pairs. Before, uh, since I'm looking at my focal point, or my pairs, obviously, um, I'm going to get, and they're kind of yellow. Well, they're definitely yellowy green. So I'm going to put, um, I'm going to push some purple into my gray, just to give it a little bit of the complementary color. So right about here, the one pair. I have one foreground here. And I'm just getting a basic shape in there. There's no no detail at this point because it's very important to get basic layout. This is off a little bit, but that's okay because I have my cloth coming in here. So that guy's sitting in there. Now it's important to get them in because as I look at my, my jug, I see this comes in right on that one right about there. And this one's a little bit more narrow, so I'm just going to get these lines in place. That noise you hear in the background is my lovely dog Lola snoring up a storm. There are part of these videos um, I've had. <laughs> Some comments, not really complaints, but, uh, but that's too bad. I'm not, so I'm not going to scoot her out of the studio. 
All right, let's leave that at that. We're gonna just sketch in our background. Um, so when I started uh, a painting like this, most paintings, I like to kind of, if I'm kind of experimenting with the value, I like to go into the corner. I don't put a lot of paint on. If you've been watching my videos, you see, I paint rather thin. And kind of scrub it in so I have room on that canvas to uh, room in that tone to move more color in. So right now I wanna wanna get a little bit of purple in that mixture. I think I'll add a little magenta as well. Blend colors right on your canvas. You get some some nice little things going on, and then you can see the side might be a bit lighter, but um, I'm gonna just keep it relatively neutral both sides. Later on, when we come around the sides, we're gonna make this side lighter and that side darker. It creates a phenomena of a, a wraparound, right? It creates that roundness there. Um, this is light on the side and that's dark on that side, but our background's um, darker on that side. We'll get to that. Meanwhile, so I'm kind of using this gray. I'm not kind of, yeah. I'm using this gray. Just to stop for a second to, to mention that, you know, that light that's coming through the window, we're seeing uh, a prismatic flow of light, which is uh, yellow, blue, red, right, that, that whole spectrum of, of the rainbow. So that's hitting that neutral gray background. So we can add you know, I'm, I don't want to get it too heavy, but look, if I could get a little bit of yellow in here, too. I put some green in here, some purple. It's kind of nice to get all those colors flowing in there. And that's the, <laughs> sort of as abstract as I think I'm going to get as a painter. But I love that part of uh, painting nature. So, we're getting this in. Uh, Rather haphazardly, we're not. If you're painting a, a still life from, uh, or, or you know, if you're painting plain air outside, you have to learn to paint faster because uh, the light moves. By the time I started this painting and finish it, the light will be in a different. So, we're gonna, even though we're doing an instructional video, we do have to keep in mind that we're painting fast. Um, at the same point now, I'm gonna get that foreground in. It's a little darker.
this, I might even get a touch of red. Why? Because when we want to bring something close to us in a painting, whether it's you know landscape, still life, ocean, pretty much anything, we get a touch more colorful. So. Um, Placement for the manganese, which has become almost. No, oh, we're out of time. <laughs> so, um, we'll come back in the next video and then we'll start shaping out our picture a little bit more. Thank you.